I, I find myself in all these situations I was in before that could have been difficult or I just wanted to get out or a certain anxiety and it's just, there's not this thing to work through, this sort of like force field that I can't get through. It's like, that's finally disintegrated and I'm just sitting here with you. So for me, I feel connected in a way that I never felt before. When I think of how I felt in the past, I always felt a sensation of wanting to flee. Like I never, ever, ever felt comfortable in my body. Like, never. So for me, the trans joy comes out of, like as if I was, it's funny to reference the matrix obviously for lots of reasons, uh, but it, it is as if you're been in some other existence and then you're finally feeling embodied, like finally feeling like I'm in here. I think it honestly manifests like it kind of it catches me by surprise sometimes, like a friend will simply take a photo uh, or, you know, chilling in their apartment and I'm sitting next to their dog and then I get like a glimpse of the photo and it's, it just sends this like, a, like electric thrill through my body, this sort of spark because it's funny because it's, it's seeing something new but also not it's uh, it's it's sort of how do i say it like i realize i look different to people now who've known me from before but for me i'm just seeing really truly going oh my gosh there's that person i've saw but never thought i'd actually get to see so uh, i uh, i talked to marcus last night who elected you vanya it's uh victor Who's Victor? I am. It's who I've always been. We're coming to an end, so it's such an interesting time. I feel so lucky that I got to play this character, and I wanted to do TV so badly because I was really hoping to get to uh, work on something where I did get to live with a character for so long, and obviously we got lucky with this show and we got to do four seasons, but his evolution has been so organic in a way, how uh, things unfolded with Victor uh, in regards to where we first found him and where we find him in this season, season four. And I feel so fortunate to have had this experience on the show and with Steve Blackman, the showrunner, who was obviously very open to um, including the aspect of my life that, uh, you know, then impacted that character in, in a sense. Um, but Victor, you know, was so much on that trajectory uh, in regards to his self-exploration, uh, his inability at first to be connected to his emotions, which was purposeful, his avoidance, his uh, wanting to be disconnected from the world. And as he becomes more and more connected, we see this growth, some of it's painful, some of it's joyous, but ultimately he's just coming into himself more and more and more. You know, I always hated mirrors. Thought everybody felt so strange in their skin. I guess that's not true, right? And uh, it's been a rare and, and special experience to play the character. What do you see now? Me. Just me. We have more representation and we have some more queer and trans stories being told by queer and trans people, but um, it's very, I think, incremental. You know, I think we need so much more change. I don't think it's changing fast enough, but um, there's obviously a difference from even just five years ago to 10 years ago too. Yeah, especially when I was first um, entering the, the industry. Uh, in the Hollywood sense, you know. Um, so I, yeah, I think there's, there's difference. There's been a, you know, a huge difference, of course, um, but it's still, there's so much that needs to change. And so we want to tell different stories and also want um, 
you know, trans people behind the camera, uh, writing, directing, editing, you know, all the facets of storytelling um, that, uh, where very important choices are made that, you know, uh, are, uh, uh, where, and where we need to be um, conscious of, of how we're portraying people and telling, and telling stories. So I've um, been really lucky with at Page Boy, this, it's been a year and a half, and um, we've done two films and have you know, multiple things in, in TV, actually. Um, that I guess I can't, you know, have to wait until you know, those projects become announced, but feeling really fortunate um, to be working with the people I'm working with, because uh, they're amazing and brilliant, and, um, doing an incredible job. Here we go. <laughs> it had come up before, you know, people have mentioned it in the past and I was always resistant and quite frankly, I didn't think I could write a book. I love books. Reading is absolutely one of my favorite things to do, but I would look at a book and go, how do you write one of those, you know? <laughs> and I think this, this period of such a onslaught of hate, of course, but misinformation or just blatant lies uh, about our lives, about our health care, et cetera. It, 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 felt, it, just, it felt like the right time. And to have this platform and the opportunity, and I do know that you know, books, particularly memoirs, have really shifted my life, offered me inspiration, um, comfort, um, you know, humbling, all, all of those things. And, uh, you know, to have that opportunity that potentially sharing one's story, um, one's experience, you know, maybe that can reach somebody or help somebody. I think we are all affected <laughs> by the expectations that come with the gender you're given at birth. We're inundated with how you should be emotionally, how you should talk, what you should be interested in, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's endless. And the more we're allowed to expand beyond these, you know, expectations and um, societal pressures to embrace who we are, you know, the more beautiful the world is, you know, I want everybody to to feel like they can access their emotion, that they can feel able to express themselves and create in a way that is true to them. But we're so indoctrinated from, you know, I mean, people have gender reveal parties, you know, even before you come out, uh, it's already started. And um, we're just, yeah, just infused with uh, all these expectations and, and ideas that, um, that I think, you know, can be harmful for people. Trans people are nothing new. Trans kids are nothing new. Gender non-conforming people are nothing new. It's existed in every culture throughout history forever, you know. Um, and. You know, that's especially why when you see these don't say gay law, for example, which is, as we know in Florida, has now expanded to all grades, it's like, that's purposeful. So it's really important to, um, to uh, yes, educate yourself about the reality of our lives and um, also to stay up to date on what is happening, which is a lot. It's overwhelming. It's constant. The ACLU actually has a tracker on their website itself, so you can see, you know, state by state what's happening. Um, and then in terms of, you know, directly, if, if you're able financially, um, ACLU, of course, but also states that are specifically affected, it's, it's great to look for organizations that are on the ground and really doing that work and are um, you know, in, in a very vulnerable space and uh, don't necessarily have the resources um, required, of course. So, you know, those would be a couple great things to start with, you know. I think a big part of being able to feel joy uh, definitely coexists with hope in a very specific way. And when I meet young people who are 
at the stepping into themselves and who they are, particularly in a time like this, you know, the idea that anybody would suggest or use terms like fad or what have you, any young person who's coming to you and sharing something that's so vulnerable and scary to share right now when you're inundated every day with, you know, leaders and uh, representatives just um, really attacking you, um, attacking your humanity, literally taking away your health care. Uh, I think so, so many young people right now are really the ones that are shifting everything and, and showing up in the face of a very intense backlash and aggression. And if anything I'm doing can help that, I mean, I, that's, that's obviously what I hope for. I think I used to look at people and it's like, you know, people are probably uncomfortable and not sharing with their own, don't get me wrong. And it's not even about being happy or not, you know, not, but I just would watch people just sort of exist or sit, or I remember an ex, I'd be like, what do you do when you wake up in the morning? Like, I didn't really actually understand how people just got in their car and went to get groceries, or like, I didn't understand. I actually didn't understand. And I just thought I was always gonna feel that way. And that I'd be this sort of annoying person where people, I'm sure people around me were kind of like, what is his deal? Like, he can't get his shit together. And now here I am. And it's just, it's so unfortunate that that bothers people so much. It's so unfortunate that people for whatever reason want to take that away from trans people. I just don't understand.